Thank you very much for your time. Uh, so I want to I want to uh, uh, make a point about this movie. The story, as written in a book, is not as easy to get to the film to a screenplay, but you you people broke it through. I'll tell you the piece of genius that I thought that started it off is where this uh, Kate Winslet turns up. We explore her topography with a red dress and she stops a footy team. <laughs> and from that moment, it almost sets the tone for the entire movie. Now, obviously, you deliberately wanted to do that. We did, yes, absolutely. We needed a frock to, 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 to produce a sort of shock and awe effect on the town. Yes, and you did. <laughs> but I have to say, like, right at the outset, I mean, I read the book, you know, years ago and fell in love with it and thought it um, was such an incredibly strong story. That landscape um, was just so drawn so beautifully and then the idea of having the couture dress make and those frocks in that setting was just mad. But I honestly didn't know how this crazy story with all of those characters and all of those storylines could really come together, um, you know, in a... In a coherent plot you know for, for the screen I just knew it would make an amazing movie experience but it was actually Jocelyn bringing Jocelyn on board as the um, the writer director and it was Jocelyn who understood the the key to it and that is it's a, actually quite a simple love story between mother and daughter it's yes. Molly and Tilly and yes. that's the emotional power you get that right and then you can weave all of the mad you know characters uh, and your stories. casting of this was really a stroke of genius because you've got a lot of people who really are unlikely in their roles, but you've put them together and all these various eccentricities that exist in the storylines have all blended well. That must have been really hard to do. Well, it was. Uh, I wanted to make sure, because there were so many characters in the film, I wanted to make sure they're very distinctive. I hate it when I go to a movie and all the characters kind of blend in and I'm like, I have no idea who that person is. Yes. I didn't want anyone to feel that in this film. And so um, I, I really deliberately chose extremely individual people. Um, and, and I was lucky to get really uh, big Australian names to, to do rather small roles simply because they wanted to be part of this ensemble. Well, you know, the Australian movie industry, thanks to people like yourselves, has absolutely trailblazed and boxed above its weight. The other thing about you, Jocelyn, is I know that you could have stayed in Hollywood, but you decided that family would have to come first. But surely, though, I must say, when you started having a family, you must have known that there was going to be this tussle <laughs> yes. between your artistic bent... And having a family life. So what was the thing that made you say, right, back to Oz, had enough of this, I'm out? <laughs> well, uh, I realised that, well, firstly, I'd been uh, looking after four children and two of them have special needs. They have autism. That took me in a completely dire different direction. My life changed hugely by having to rethink everything I knew about parenting, about love, about what it means to be a mother. Uh but deep in my heart, I still wanted to tell stories. I still wanted to tell, to, to make beautiful movies. But it just didn't seem the right environment for PJ and me to be making movies yeah. in Hollywood. Mm. We are Australian filmmakers. We have Australian stories. And we really were desperate to come back and just be Australians again with, around our friends and family in the landscape we grew up in. And uh, I was just thrilled when Sue... Oh, I was wanting to come back and then Sue says, hey, I've got this uh, movie. Do you want to work on it with me? You did turn me down the first time. But oh, yes, I did. Why? I didn't tell you why. I'll tell you why. why? I'll tell you why. Uh, because my second child, I have two kids with autism, yeah. and he'd only just been diagnosed. He'd, we weren't sure if he'd ever learned to speak. And I was in a pretty uh, in very stressed out state, yeah. uh, stage at that point. Uh, but luckily, when, when she came back, he'd started talking. I came back because there's nobody, nobody could have done this movie in the way that Jocelyn did. Well, and I've got to say to you both, there are two things you girls have done. You've taken a story that could easily be regarded as a boutique kind of following and you've globalised it and you've done that also, not through just your storytelling, but you've picked the cast members to get the hook. <laughs> and I, I took some people with me who are not movie buffs to see this and they said to me, hey... We knew about the story. I'm glad you brought us. We love the movie. Oh. That's exactly what you want, isn't it? That it's, is. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so what happens now? You, you promote the movie. People go and see it. 
Uh, it's got to go global, of course, because otherwise uh, you don't get what you want. What happens now? Well, John? it's an international. Yeah? Well, sorry. Well, both of you. Um, it, it is an international film, and um, I'm pleased to say that we've sold the film to around 21 countries internationally. It's fantastic. It opens in the UK in November tell as well. Tell us how important that. Tell the public how important that is that you've done that. You cannot finance a film that has that setting, that um, period, those yeah. beautiful costumes, and that cast unless you raise a substantial yes. amount of money. And you can't do that unless you can actually pitch the film to the rest of the world and um, pre-sell it, which is what I did. And um, I'm delighted to say that there are funny little towns all over the world <laughs> where people can relate to this mad story. Yes. Now, yes. I'm going to ask you both this question. From your point, Sue, what's your favourite part of doing this movie? Oh, look, the favourite part always for me is the the early creative discussions and the discussions with, um, firstly, you know, the writer of the book yeah. and then with Jocelyn and the imagining, you know, the possibilities where you think, oh, we could do this, we could do that. Hey, we could uh, ask Kate Winslet to do the role. And then the reality kicks in. And, you know, in our case, um, we waited, you know, for nearly nine or ten months for Kate. And thankfully, she said yes. But often, um, you, you know, you can have those dreams and they can end up in a pile of ashes, but you just keep going and going. And Jocelyn, for you? Uh, my favourite part about making mm. this movie was working with the incredible actors. I loved every single one of them. I did handpick them. Uh, but it's pretty obvious they're the, they're, the, they're the cream of Australian talent. Uh, the, all, all the actors in this film, uh, of course, Kate is an honorary Australian, but... Everybody in the movie is exceptional and I just love working with them. They're just great artists. So it took this to get you or your dear friend sitting <laughs> beside you to bring you 18 years out of almost a kind of an exile. So what happens next? Well, I, I am so happy that I'm back making films. As a director, I, I've produced my very talented husband and I've been writing, <laughs> but I haven't been directing and I love directing. It's really, it's something I've loved since I was a teenage girl. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to be back and I plan to keep going. Well, thank you for the many hours of entertainment you've provided Australia, but also your inspiration to both people in the entertainment business who want to get up there, and particularly for women, because I think you guys have really done something special here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leon.